So this is John Spielman with a roundup of the seventh round of the candidates tournament in Yekaterinburg. Um, it's, so they're now halfway through the tournament and it was a very dramatic round because um, in the Pomnishi who had been bestriding the table was a whole point clear lost to his nearest pursuer Maxime Vachier Lagrave and so they're now first equal a point clear of the pack and Ding Liren and Kirill Alexienko are further behind. Um, so let's look at this game first. Let's look at this one. So it's a Vinava. So he's fighting um, Mipomishu. He's really doing his stuff. 97. They used to go Queen G4, I think, mainly, but now H4 is quite trendy. Um, <coughs> Queen to there. H5. Not clear. I mean, I mean, I, I stuck this in an engine. Excuse me, I have a cold, so but not for the virus itself. <laughs> and not clear. You can't play takes and d4. <coughs> and if um, pawn takes queen checks bishop d2, queen takes d4. Um, I don't know if you'd maybe go h6 actually at this moment, but this is a line. And my engine was saying, oh, this is okay for black. But it looks jolly scary to me. I mean, it's quite possible it's true that it is. But it, unless you were very, very well prepared, you'd... Of course, they are very well prepared. But unless you're absolutely certain, you wouldn't play this as black. Um, okay, so <clears throat> he went h6, which is a bit of a concession. White's gained a bit of space. Got this, some pressure on the square. And very importantly, if the knight ever goes to f5 then there'll be g4 always, so the knight won't be stable in f5. Uh, rook to there, check. Went king f8, interesting. I guess if bishop d7 you go bishop d3, and you're claiming he can't play bishop a6 anymore. I'm not enormously enamoured of this, but I mean I suppose it's alright. Um, I don't know if he could have taken on d4 first. He took, uh, MVL took now. Queen e5 check might be possible, I don't know. Anyway, this happened. So that's, the Queen's done her work. Uh, she's made it difficult, well, impossible for Black to castle and messed up <coughs> his coordination on the king side, so now she goes back. Um... Well, I feel that this position is really difficult to play for black because of the rook. Because you, um, you know, it, it, it's you're going to have to do something at some point to get it out. If you start playing f6 type moves, you're going to weaken e6. And otherwise, you're going to have to either move the knight and put the king on e7. Or, or go for a long march with the king somewhere like here. Um, it just feels really difficult to play. So I wasn't particularly surprised. Uh, that probably wasn't threatening to go to h7, but it might have been at some moment. Oh, I see, he had to. If um, he's going to run his king, he needs to be able to do that. So knight takes rook, pawn takes knight, uh, white gets a huge initiative. Uh, you can't play rook takes. One important thing is that you can't go takes, 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 because this just wins material. This wins the wins the game. So you'd have to give black a, an enormous, quite a huge initiative if you did that. And he went c5. And I think what he's claiming is that by inducing f, sorry, f5, inducing um, f4, he has... Um, blocked the square from the knight. I thought he'd take now. When I, I looked, I mean, my instinctive reaction was to do this. Now, maybe you go e5 here. If knight takes knight to here, it's certainly dangerous. Just how dangerous is hard to tell, of course. But, <clears throat> you know, black is... If here takes... takes. I don't think you maybe play knight takes and rookie one check, knight e5. Maybe you just go here. 
and white's got a huge attack really <clears throat> it's going to be very difficult for black to defend himself against the threats from from all directions so i thought he might do that but actually he went he just left it mvl and now his plan is to play for g4 um so black is almost okay now but sadly this move is a move too quick really um if pawn takes pawn i haven't even really thought about it but i assume you play either queen h7 probably queen h7 and then f5 or something and you probably checkmate black a move before he gets a position um i'm guessing what happened was it's a good move i'm um, attacking f5 and black's problem <coughs> now i think if king e6 he might have just have taken the queens sorry if king e6 you can just play knight takes g7 can't you rubbish um first but uh the problem is that actually this knight when it comes back to g3 with the king is a really good defender and black has hardly got any checks so black's structure has been smashed up in the king side and this is already a winning position he tried queen g4 he might as well um <coughs> nothing better to do and this position is just lost black only has one check queen d2 because the knight controls all these excellent squares and the whole position is a catastrophe really he tried g5 i don't know why particularly and he resigned so that was the first game and um it was very important because it means that mvl has joined nipomnishi in the lead so the other the other games we'll go quickly through the other games as well uh karana wang hao is was a petrov so this is the line that Anders Carlsen played against Caruana in um, the World Championship match. King B1 is, this is still what Carlsen played, and Carlsen played Bish takes D2, Caruana played Knight takes. I think you can play D5. It looked quite dangerous to me. I didn't like this rook being opposite this bishop I sort of thought there might be tactics somehow but it never really worked out for white that's a useful move obviously buttressing the c5 pawn I guess he has to go g5 or nothing makes sense really f5 is a good move one thing these boys do do is that when they have to do something they do it they get on with it I think bishop takes is also a good move I thought he'd go knight, uh, knight c3 now, but I think bishop e6 is okay. You have to be very careful that there isn't some sort of rook e6 hit, but if, but if you are careful it doesn't really work. <clears throat> um, I imagine Caruana now was basically starting to think he should make a draw. He played like this. You can play bishop takes c4 check and it takes bishop as well that he took. nice move to get rid of that pawn um you don't really want to play um well if you play b4 or sign then well it'd be a bishop d5 check in fact went down this position already? yeah i'm just doing it okay. um and um I you were at... no i'm doing a round up okay sorry and um so what happened was um he could have played rook take c2 check at this moment and that would have been slightly, very, very slightly more interesting, I think, in terms of, I'm going to go take, take, check here, take here. But I mean, once you get your king to about, round about a black square near this pawn, you're only one pawn down, it's going to be all right. What he actually did, he had h5, h4 first. Um... And they agreed to draw here. He just played bishop d3 and agreed to draw. 
So that was quite a tough battle, but Caruana hasn't been quite getting to the pitch of the ball, as, as English people would say about cricket. Um, he's uh, <coughs> not, not been doing very much harm to his opponents in most of the games, and I guess that would have been a slight disappointment to him. The other two games are Ding against Alexienka and Geary against Grishchuk, and we'll just quickly do these. So... Um, I thought he might try f5, um, but then queen a4, I mean I was looking at this, thinking is this a good idea, but this line, maybe you play rook c7 now, I don't know, here, probably slightly better for white might be I suppose um, your if you can break up the queen side uh, and e6 is a weakness okay he didn't do this he just brought his pieces back I thought white would go e4 now but it's not very clear really knight e5 this looks a bit odd to me but so black's got quite good central control now but um that's an annoying move, pinning the e pawn Rook to there. I guess that's the right move. I don't know if he could have. He needs to be able to protect <coughs> e6. I don't know what happens to knight d4 here. I guess you probably play e5. I guess it doesn't work terribly well. Anyway, I mean, I'd be interested. What happened was this. Um, and now the knight's come to c3. Black White has, has to break up the queen side as quickly as possible, or he's going to lose. And now he played bishop d5, which basically is a move that's a more or less agreeing a draw. He could, I mean, the interesting move is this. Takes, 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 queen g5, and this rook, rook here, rook b8, queen d4, um, probably b3 now. <coughs> rook to here, some move, and um, well, this pawn is rather dangerous, but, but how, how good it is I don't know. There's this move, and I think the engine wanted to play bishop, bishop f5 now, rather than rook f5, um, queen c6 I suppose, and I mean and this pawn is, is a danger, but maybe it's okay. What actually happened was much less interesting. Uh, Alexienko basically bailed out. That's uh, what happened. Um, and yeah, if you go rook c5, rook b2 is at least equal for black. I mean, white can draw. You'd have to go rook c5, rook b2, take this pawn. Uh, I mean, it would be a stupid thing to do though, anyway. Here. Here. And here you can draw like this. Um, I don't think you want to be more checks. You just go here. And you're a pawn down and you draw, but obviously you don't want to do this. Why would you want to do this? And they played some moves and found one of the many ways to draw. So that was that one. And there's one more, which is Geary against Grischuk. Uh, this was interesting. This was in English. Um, so, um, well, white has some pressure against the e pawn. By the, by, the, by the way, if you play bishop e6, you can play knight e4, knight e4, d4, if you want to. It's interesting, because bishop b6 looks like a very natural move. Uh, he played h5, d4 takes, pawn takes. Now, White's plan now is to play d4, d5 very quickly. So, Grishchuk blocked it. Good move. And I thought this ought to be quite good for Black. But actually, um, White is quite quick. 
I thought he'd play rook c1, um, which threatens d5, by the way. I miscounted the first time. But after this, here and here, apparently nothing very much is going on. Um, okay. Um, he went d5. You can do it this way if you like. Obviously, pawn takes, bishop h3 check would be a very bad idea. Well, it would certainly not be good for, good for, uh, good for black. So they've got this ending. This is quite reminiscent. There's an ending you sometimes get in the Karo Khan or in IQP positions in which white has doubled F pawns. And uh, the pawn structure apart from that is fairly similar. But I mean, I mean, in that one, normally white's king's on the queen side, which uh, makes it somewhat different. Here he went, I think white's king's normally on the queen side. Then. Anyway, this happened. Um, and here, Priest Stuart didn't make any attempt to win, he just played d4. And they're going to draw after a few more moves. So! Quite a, quite a tough round. Um, the the big news is that MVL beat Nipomnishi. And that really means that, well, it's a two-way fight between them at the moment, but obviously that was a favour for the, the pack behind as well. Um, it means that the, um, the, 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 the they have plus two, I think. And... Caruana and people like that are a point behind, but Ding is a lot further behind that as well. Let me just, I will pick it up from Chess Bomb in fact, because it's just easier to have a cross table. Um, here we go. There's probably a, a cross table on. Here we go. Vashil Agravani, Pomnishi, four and a half. Karana, Grischuk, Giri and Wang Hao, three and a half. And Alexienka and Ding two and a half. So Ding is two points behind, that's plus four behind with the second half to come. And the guy who was favourite basically is almost out of it unless something extraordinary happens. Of course tournaments sometimes um, they are they are really tournaments of two halves. It's not that unusual. But I'd be very surprised if he he might get up to fifty percent, but I doubt it will do much more than that. So I think it must be between MVL, Nipomnishi and probably Caruana. But of course, I mean, one of the other guys on three and a half could jump up. It's very, very close. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, so it's very quick. Um, there was just really the one very interesting game. Bashir Lagrave against Nipomnishi. And the others, I guess they're pretty tired, these boys. Anyway, they play on... Thursday and Friday. I'm intending, I've got a cold, I'm, I'm managing not to splutter all over you at this moment, uh, to stream on Friday as well, but not on Thursday when Alex Lopez will be doing uh, commentary for Lee Chess. Um, so, as I said, I, I hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll, we'll look forward to a fascinating second half of the tournament.